There, welcome to a video tutorial here on transformations of exponential functions. So what I want to do in this video is just apply the transformations we've been looking at previously in some of the video lessons I've been doing and just apply them to our studies of exponential functions. So previously we've looked at transformations including vertical and horizontal translations, vertical and horizontal stretches and compressions, as well as reflections. So what I want to do in this video tutorial is apply these to exponential functions. Okay, so we'll start with vertical translation. And I'm just going to demonstrate what a vertical translation would look like. I'm going to graph the equation y equals 3 to the power of x, and I'm going to compare it to y equals 3 to the power of x plus 5. When I type in y equals 3 to the x, that's this blue graph here, I, and I'm comparing that to y equals 3 to the x plus 5. You can see I've shifted my graph up by 5 units. So typically, your exponential function passes through 0, 1. Because I'm shifting up by 5, it makes sense that our graph now passes through 0, 6. So that's upwards. Looking at downwards, remember, if we subtract a number at the end of our function, we move our function down by that number of units. So you can see here that I'm shifting this function down by 1, 2, 3 units. Instead of passing through 0, 1, you now see that it passes through 0, negative 2. Right, we shifted that point down by 3. So previously we've talked about something called an asymptote. In this case we have a horizontal asymptote. By substituting numbers in for x, there's never a way that you can turn this 3 into a negative number. So the lowest that you could possibly get, you might be thinking is 0, but you can't, you can't even turn this into 0 if you think about it. Even by putting in negative numbers we just get a fractional value. It never will reach 0, and that's why we have this horizontal asymptote at 0 for this function. If I move this function up by 5, I shift my horizontal asymptote up by 5 units as well. Okay, so I will never actually touch 5. I approach it, and that's sort of the definition of a horizontal asymptote. Same thing in this function here. My, my base function, I can't get to 0. If I shift it down by 3 units, I can't touch negative 3. If you think back to when you looked at horizontal translations, if we added or subtracted a number after the x, remember this is sort of like bizarro world, you think because it's negative you'd be moving to the left, typically we associate left with negative, but in this case we're actually shifting to the right by 2, and you can see that on my graphing calculator here, I've graphed my original function but with a red function here, that's our translated function, you can see that I'm moving two units to the right. So instead of passing through 0, 1, I'm passing through 2, 1, that's one of the key points on that graph. So that's to the right by 2. Same thing with horizontal translations of any function. If I add a number after my x, you can see I'm moving to the left by that number of units. So instead of passing through 0, 1, I'm passing through negative 4, 1. So vertical stretches and compressions, if you multiply by some factor in front of your exponential function, just like any other function, we call this a vertical stretch. Okay, so I'll show you on the graph here. Here's our base function, as usual, in blue. What I've done is I've multiplied by a factor of 2. You can see that compared to my original function. And as a result, I'm stretching my graph by a factor of 2. So I originally passed through 0, 1. If I multiply my y value by 2, I'm now going to pass through 0, 2. This is what we call a vertical compression. Our value in front, it's like a fraction, like 1 half. You end up with a compression. And we'd say this is a compression by a factor of 2. So originally, our graph passed through 0, 1. If we compress, you can see that it's now passing through 0, 1 half. Okay, so there's a compression by 2. Okay, so note that the graph no longer goes through 0, 1. This is a, a key way of identifying uh, the equation given a graph. So you can see, you know, if I asked you to match up this green function, the function up, up here, you'd tell right away that it would, it would have to be this one because this guy passes through 0, 1 half. Right, this one you could look at and say, oh, this one passes through 0, 2, therefore I need a stretch by 2. Okay, so we've done vertical stretches and compressions. Makes sense to do horizontal stretches and compressions. Same rules apply here as with other functions. If we're multiplying by a, a number greater than 1 in front of our x value, we call that a horizontal compression. So you can see the blue graph here. That's our base graph. You can see this one's thinner by a factor of 2, so we, we call that a horizontal compression. This guy still passes through 0, 1, because remember, we're compressing our x values by a factor of 2. If you compress 0 by a factor of 2, you still get 0. So this thing still passes through 0, 1. So now if we multiply by a number that's between 0 and 1, this is what we call a horizontal stretch, just like with any other function. 
and you can see this thing still passes through zero one for the same reason as this guy, but the red graph is stretched in the horizontal direction. Okay, so talking about reflections, this is the last transformation that we talked about. If we put a negative inside the function, so in front of the x, remember that this is what we called a horizontal reflection or a reflection over the y-axis. So if this is our base graph here, you can see that we totally reflect our graph over that y-axis, and this thing kind of turns into what resembles a decay function. So if you have 2 to the negative x, you might recall that we could write that as 1 over 2 to the x. That's one of the exponent laws we talked about. Anytime you have a negative exponent, you can put 1 over the base, make the exponent positive, and you've got the same thing. Okay, so anytime you have 2 to the negative x, you're reflecting that graph over the y-axis so that it becomes a decay function. Okay, so now if we put the negative in front of the function, instead of reflecting over the y-axis, we're going to reflect over the x-axis. That's exactly the same as the reflections for any other function. Okay, so last thing I want to do here is just a little matching exercise. I've given you four graphs. Let's start by just looking at this first graph here. So you can see right away that this thing has been reflected over the x-axis. It doesn't pass through 0, 1. It passes through 0, negative 1. Uh, so I'm going to look at an equation that has a reflection over the x-axis. So right away, this guy should jump out to you. Right, reason being it's got a, uh, a negative in front of the function that tells us that we're reflecting over the x-axis. Okay, taking a look at this graph here, this graph is obviously a decay function, right? It decreases from left to right, and you can see that it doesn't pass through 0, 1, it passes through 0, 3. So there's gotta be some sort of stretch factor, probably by a factor of three to get it to pass through 0, 3. Uh, and we also need a decay function. So looking over here, you can see that one third, that's your red flag for telling you that there's a decay situation. Let's go up here and look at this guy. You can see this thing doesn't pass through zero one, right? Notice how I'm kind of using those key points on the graph to compare them to the equations. So I wanna look at a, an equation that I know would not pass through zero one. And the only way I can get a graph to not pass through zero one is to either stretch it or compress it. So I'm gonna grab this one, compressing my graph by three, that's gonna make this thing go through zero and one third, which is right here. By the process of elimination, you can see this guy is attached to this graph, uh, but if we didn't use the process of elimination, you'd see that this is an exponential growth function, so we don't want a fraction as our base. And you can see that it goes through zero three. In order for it to go through zero three, we need a stretch factor by a factor of three. So that's kind of the red flag that tells you that these two match up nicely. Hopefully. This little exercise is how you understand these, these functions and these transformations.